Hello! Today I'll present you a quick walkthrough in the Dyno software, starting from inertial roller Dyno configuration through creating a project and making runs, up to printing the report. Let's go through the settings. First, we will customize the Dyno report in Report Editor. I'll quickly just change company name and address to show you the concept. The picture that will be displayed on the report can be changed by replacing the file at this path. After making the changes, we click Save. The next part of the setup will be for technical details of your dyno. In general, we set the dyno type to roller. For a roller dyno, typical loss from load factor is around 8% is a fraction of power that is lost on the power transfer from a tire to a roller. In this example, we are setting up an inertial dyno, so we uncheck the absorber dyno box. Next, we go to the roller section. Here, we need to set up roller diameter. We use 3 tenth of a meter in this example. And below, we fill in the inertia, short for rotational moment of inertia of the roller set. Inertia can be calculated from roller set geometry. You can use the tool that's built in the software, or you can create the roller model in a CAD software like SOLIDWORKS and read the moment of inertia from there. For our example, we will set it to 7 kg meter squared. In the frequency input section, we only have to set up the number of signals per rotation. It's equal to the number of teeth on the signal wheel. In this example, 36. That's all the setup that's required for an inertial dyno. The dyno software organizes all runs in projects. Creating such a project is required for every new vehicle to be tested on the dyno. A new project is created in Projects tab by right-clicking the project table and selecting New Project option. In our new project we need to fill in the vehicle details. We will use the online database to speed it up. To keep the database tidy, it's a good idea to fill in the customer and vehicle ID fields, where we typically place the vehicle license plate number. It's important to check the values in the measurement section. These values are the correction values that influence the measurement result. First of them is the engine inertia. It's the moment of inertia of elements connected to the engine shaft. It's mainly influenced by the flywheel size, and it's estimated from the engine information. Hovering the cursor over the field will show you what is used for the estimation. Remember to have this information correctly filled up too. The next correction is the drivetrain inertia, DT for short. It's the moment of inertia corrected to the vehicle drivetrain that is transferred to the roller axis of rotation. The main component of this value is the vehicle wheel. By using the tool available under right click, we can estimate it. In the tool, we fill in the wheel size. We also need to mind the number of wheels used in the measurement. For two wheel drive dyno, we use two wheels from set one and zero wheels from set two. Last value is the drivetrain loss factor. It's a fraction of power that is lost due to the gearbox and differential efficiency. For one axle driven vehicle with manual gearbox, it's around 4%. 
This value is automatically updated after you change the gearbox selection. When we have all project details filled in, we click the button below to activate the project. All the runs made with the software will be associated with the currently active project. We can check which project is active by looking at the program title bar or at the run tab. With active project, we can make runs. During this demonstration, I will use my test gig with electric motor, so don't pay attention to the measurement results. In typical case, we use engine speed calculated from roller speed. When making the run with a new vehicle or in a different gear, the first step is to calibrate the speed ratio. We can do it by right-clicking the speed ratio field and selecting set from current engine speed. Now we need to drive at the speed from the box in the gear that will be used later for the test. When we have the speed stable, we click OK. The speed ratio is automatically calculated. You don't need to do this calibration with every run. Just do it before the run that will be done in different gear. Now we can proceed on with the measurement. To start registering the data, click Start. There are no specific requirements for the time when you need to press the Start button. The correct run part is always automatically selected by the program anyway. When convenient, slow down to the starting speed that you like to use and press full throttle. At the rev limiter, release the throttle, press clutch and switch into neutral. Now the free rotation losses of the dyno and the car are measured during coast down phase. It's not required to register data until full roller stop. You can press the stop button when the losses measurement covers the speed range you want to display in the graph. After the measurement, this button turns green to allow you to quickly load the measurement for analysis. Analyze tab contains the currently loaded runs. I'll do another quick run to have more than one for comparison. Line style and color can be freely set up. We can remove the run from Analyze tab and we can load a previously made run by finding it in Projects tab and double-clicking it. Not required columns can be hidden with right-click menu. We can assign a name and comment for our runs. By right-clicking the graph, we can select an option to save or print the report. That's all. Have a good time using the dyno.